Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. I will come here to an exploration of a fascinating and controversial topic, the integrity of the Bible versus other sacred texts. Now in this video, we'll take a look into a compelling argument about why the Bible has faced extensive alterations and scrutiny over time. Now drawing on a point that a brother shares, that this is so because the Bible is seen as a threat unlike other texts such as the Quran. Now, this discussion will unravel the reasons behind the numerous versions of the Bible and how these changes might reflect deeper spiritual conflicts. We will explore the notion that these alterations aim to obscure the true message and identity of the scriptures. But before we get into the videos, I would like to say a very big shout out to this brother. Make sure to follow him on TikTok for more interesting videos. So join me as he takes us through his video. I will be right back. Hello, mom, Israel. Finally, gonna get a haircut today. But if you if you seen the book of D, uh, the book of Eli with Denzel, there's a scene where he's like talking to the girl and they're talking about the Bible and they're like and he's like, oh, it's the only book. And he was like, uh, after the war, they try to destroy it, whatever, right? Make a long story short, they always tell you in movies, right? So the Bible is the only real word of God. The Bible is like the 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 Bible is like the the meat and to get to the bones, we have other books, right? That they took out, right? Keep word, took out. Now, when you talk to other religious folks or non-believers in the Bible, what is their number one argument? What do they say? The Bible is tampered with. It's tampered with. How can we trust you? Like I've spoken to um Muslims, uh Muslims, and I have I know Muslim, I have family members that are Muslim, and you know, they're they were born into it. Good, great people. Great people, great people. That's what they do it, right? Um, I'm totally respectful of their religious views, even if I don't agree with it, right? So um, I've spoken to Muslims before, some prideful ones, that, and their number one argument is that, yeah, well, the Quran hasn't been tampered with. The Quran hasn't been touched. You know why it hasn't been touched? Because it's not a threat. It's not a threat. So they leave it alone. They don't care about it. They don't. They don't care about it because it's not... The real book and all these other books are nothing but knockoffs of the Bible, right? So they don't even realize that when they say these things, oh, the Bible is tampered with. The Bible, of course, is tampered with. You're trying to, you, you, you only want to mess with the truth. You only want to mess with the truth. Why do you think there's a million different versions of the Bible? Because in this satanic world, the Most High says, don't change his word. What the Satanists do? Change his word into a million different versions. What, think about it. Why do you have so many different versions of the Bible, bro? Why? The majority of Earth speaks English. Why do they keep changing it so much? That is in direct conflict and disagreement and disrespect towards the Most High God. They do it because the Bible is the only real book. Once you know who the real people are, when you throw out their Roman Christianity, when you throw out pagan Christianity that has nothing to do with the Bible, and you know who the real children of Israel are, the real Jews, like the real ones, like the real ones, like the real ones, like the capital R-E-A-L ones, black Americans, black Americans, black Americans, when you put the real people in, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. The real Jews, now we're talking. When you know who the real children of Israel are, now we're talking. Now, now you take the only real book of the Most High, right? You take the only real book of the Most High, right? And you know who his real chosen people are above all people because there's levels to this. This is why the Satanists preach equality, even though they use their people, white teeth, at PPL at the top, black people at the bottom, but they preach equality. Right? Even though black people all over the world at the bottom, the Bible explains that. Right? You see, you got black people that be like, uh, that don't understand why we're in the condition that we're in. Right? Or why things are how they are. But the Bible explains that. Right? But they've been programmed away from the Bible. Right? But I tell people, you are, they only mess with the Bible because it's the threat. It's the threat. It's the threat. Why you think in there, Hollywood, you notice Hollywood and all these other places and things like that. I've even seen pornography to keep it real where they're like, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Every two seconds, pay attention to Hollywood. I guarantee you watch a movie. Why? No matter what movie you watch, when we'll show you, I can almost guarantee you they say, and we all know they're saying it. I can almost guarantee you they're going to say Jesus at least once. Once. 
Not Muhammad, no disrespect to that. Not Muhammad, not Allah, not, not, not Buddha, not whatever other things everybody else dealing with. And you know what? People, it's all in love. It's all in love. It's all in love. We're just all, we just all don't believe the same. We all, we can love on each other and respect each other and not believe the same. Like, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. When people come and tell me that they don't believe in the Bible, I'm respectful to them, right? When they say they don't believe in my God, I'm respectful to them, right? So, yeah. They're not, they haven't touched you guys' books because it's not the threat. <laughs> it's not. You're only going to change what's the threat. You're only going to change what's the threat, right? They touch the Bible, they change it because it's the threat. That's why it's tampered with. So, yeah, duh. Duh, the Bible has been tampered with. Duh. Duh. In this satanic world, it's the only true word of God. Duh. All praise to the most often. Now, I read an article where someone is asking why there are so many different versions of the Bible. And trust me, there are so many different answers to this question. And I'm just going to read them through and then we can talk about these answers and what a brother is saying in the video. Now, the first one says there's a couple of reasons. One is just translation choices. Any bilingual pain will tell you there's not a one for one translation of every single word. So translators will look at these words and make a choice. Do they go with the most literal option or try and go for the one that covers the same spirit as the original word? There's not really a right or wrong answer here. Both are valuable, each in their own way. I like to use a concordance to see these variations side by side to get a more well-rounded understanding of whatever passage. The problem I see is the variation in canon. Deleting wild chapters and books from the canon changes a lot of things. It manipulates people into thinking one way simply because they were forced into ignorance. I hate seeing NT on the books. There's so much missing. Understanding the history of biblical canon is so important. Now, another one says a little bit of politics, a little bit of language changes over time. So we have to retranslate it into something that makes sense in the modern day. Personally, my only beef is translating it into a modern dialect from a previous dialect translation, like translating the old English versions into a modern English. Personally, I believe it would be best if we translated from the original text into a modern dialect or language each and every time. Now, this is where the core issue arises. When we encounter the multitude of Bible versions, translations are available today. This proliferation often leads to variations in the text, with some scriptures or verses being altered or removed over time. Now, as highlighted by a brother, the Bible's extensive revisions might not just be about textual differences, but could reflect deeper intentions to obscure or manipulate its original message. Now, this perspective suggests that the numerous versions and translations are not merely academic exercises, but could be part of a broader effort to alter the Bible's content. In contrast, other religious texts like the Quran are seen as less affected by such changes, reinforcing the argument that the Bible's frequent revisions might be a response to its profound significance and perceived threat to certain agendas. Now, when you compare several versions of the Bible, you will notice that several verses are entirely missing from the newer translations. In addition to the few missing verses, there are numerous words and phrases that are missing from your translations. Why do these translations omit these verses, phrases, and words? Are there new translations taking verses out of the Bible, as some claim? Well, yes. Now, this is another whole different conversation. I really agree on what a brother is saying. I align with the perspective that the Bible, in its essence, represents a profound threat to certain interests. Now, this viewpoint suggests that the frequent revisions and multiple versions of the Bible are not mere coincidences, but deliberate actions to obscure crucial truths. Now, the removal of significant parts of the text over time seems to serve a purpose to prevent people from accessing the full and an altered message that the Bible contains. Now, this argument posits that people altering and fragmenting the text, there is a concerted effort to diminish the Bible's impact and keep its deeper truths hidden from the public. We have finally come to the end of the video, but I want you, my viewers, to be the stitchers of this video. Share your thoughts, your views, your contributions in the comment section down below. And let's have a conversation there. Thank you for always watching and see you in my next video.